Welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in. In this video here, I wanted to go over a how to assemble one of these enclosures. As we start here, we can see this CAD drawing and all the different angles and views we can see of the components. As I start when I put these together, I recommend starting with the bottom piece as shown here, and then I will install each side, have them square, and then I will screw the sides together and secure them. We can see here we have the left and the right. Then the back gets installed and screwed together. The front gets laid in and then the top. And after all the components are laid on after the back and the sides, I screw them in and secure them just in the same fashion. Now to start off, let's go over the basic hardware. That square there covers the LED light connection and the half inch screws screw it to the ceiling. And here, the rest of the components will be attached and screwed together with those one and a quarter inch stainless steel screws. All these components are provided. Let's start with our first component here. This is the bottom. You can see in the gray area, we have a slot or a pocket for heat tape or heating pads as far as belly heat goes. And then we have our slot here down the center of this where the thermostat probe can be placed to control the belly heat. And one way we can distinguish the top from the bottom is this bottom piece here has a shallow track. The top track is much deeper. In this angle we get a little bit of a more clear view. And here we have the sides, a second set of components. One thing to see and view from here is the vents are more oriented upwards and that where my thumb is right there, that's how we orient the front from the back. The screws on the front of the sides are recessed further back to screw into the front center brace, which seats behind the tracks. As we can see here, there's a difference in spacing between the screws for the front of the sides and the screws for the back of the sides. This is a key step when assembling these cages. This should not be mixed. You don't want to get this step backwards. Let's go over the front and back pieces, which we can see the openings here for visibility into the enclosure, the logo, but also this little hole, this pocket here, we don't want to mix this up because this needs to face outwards in order for the locking mechanism to have clearance for the plunger to pass through and lock the glass from sliding in front of each other. And here the, we can see on the back the slots for the vents are oriented more upward and they point down. And then here in the corners we have these holes drilled so that this little square can be punched out to have access for ancillary power products. So if you have a different kind of heating lamp or a heating device that needs to be mounted on the inside, there's access for power through those holes once that has been punched out. We bevel our fronts on the windows to keep square edges, make the cage stronger. Now let's go over the top piece. Here, as an option, you can get a stainless steel screen, and here it is all sealed in. We have the LED light power cord exiting that slot. We have these pockets for a circular puck to be installed for stacking purposes to lock the cages together. As we go back to this option here for the screen, there's little tabs that hold the centerpiece on. These can be easily broken with your fingernail or a screwdriver, a flathead preferably, and the top piece can be removed when needed and can be placed back on when not needed. All this is flush so that when cages are stacked on top of it for a different use, and here we can see the top track, which is deeper than the, and a lot deeper than the bottom track. We have a better view of the screen here. We went with a 16th by 16th inch opening, which gives a lot more strength and harder for animals to escape. Most of the time when these cages ship, you'll have a piece of tape covering the LED power connector to keep from damaging the rest of the enclosure. LED light 
It is mounted flush into a pocket machined into the ceiling of the cage. To make life easier, I recommend getting your hardware in an accessible container, using a small impact or drill to save your wrists and to make the process a little more efficient for you. I will begin with the bottom and then I will assemble and screw or secure the sides to the bottom to start. This is the best way to start off with a base so that the back can be assembled with something to hold it together. I first secure the sides to the bottom. As we can see, I make sure to get them as close and square the edges as possible. And after I get the sides securely fastened to the bottom, I will then, by hand, start the screws into the sides of the back section and the bottom. This will help us and make it easier as we go to install the back piece, which is the second step in our assembly process. Now we proceed to installing the back. Make sure the vents are oriented up. We screw and secure the bottom corners in. And after we do that, we work our way up the sides. And then when we will screw the rest of the screws along the bottom end. Now let's proceed to installing the front and the top. I lay the top on and then I will place the front in without screwing it at first to support the top as I place the screws in and I square it with all the edges. I hand thread the screws in to start them and then I will screw the bottom piece of the front end so I can press it up against the bottom track to hold it in position. And I make sure to squeeze it against the track so it doesn't move and it stays in its perfect position. I then, after squaring the edges up, I will screw the rest of the piece of the top on and secure it. You can see me pulling the front to the tracks there. And now we can see a finished product. All pieces have been secured and screwed together. We start here with the front. We have the sides. Everything is ready to go. This is how your cage should look when it's complete.